Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go on an adventure in Space Engine and look for what's known as Rogue Planets, also known as Planemos. We're going to find out how many of these unusual objects we currently think there are in our galaxy and talk about science behind them. Welcome to What The Math. So this is actually not a planemo, this is a regular planet with a regular moon somewhere out there in our galaxy, but possibly also not really very realistic because it's actually procedurally generated. But we are going to go and look for what are known as rogue planets, basically planets that were kicked out out of their own solar systems and became sort of like the orphan planets. They orbit completely alone by themselves, maybe with some moons around them, um, and we think there's actually quite a lot of them. Previous estimates suggested that there might be even more of them than the stars in our galaxy. As a matter of fact, we thought that there might be up to a trillion of these uh, Jupiter-sized objects that um, are out there simply because of the observations um, from various telescopes. And the way we found them is actually very, very original. And let me actually just start by explaining to you how we've discovered um, the number of these unusual rogue planets in our galaxy. So there's actually something known as um, a microlensing event. Basically, whenever an object uh, passes in front of a star, it creates this very unusual phenomenon that you kind of see right now. This is called microlensing. This was actually uh, discovered a long, long time ago and uh, explained a long, long time ago by Einstein. And let me just actually show you an example of what this might look like by using, I guess, a black hole, such as, for example, uh, the infamous Cygnus X3, one of the first black holes discovered. And essentially, here is how microlensing works. Now, uh, we know that black holes can bend space time quite dramatically, and so whenever you, a star uh, is behind a, such a black hole, so I'm going to position it just a little bit behind, you'll see that it creates this kind of a, a very interesting lens bending effect. Now, if you actually were to do this um, with a star that's much, much farther away, so like a star that's really far away, and and the black hole or some kind of a other massive body was basically in front of the starlight, you would actually be able to measure how much uh, of this lens, bend, uh, lens bending effect there was. And using this, you can even estimate the mass of an object. And essentially using this technique um, back in 2011, uh, 474 such micro lensing events were detected, suggesting that there was like several hundred billions of uh, rogue planets out there, very similar to our Jupiter. But then another study very recently, um, specifically uh, back in, in 2017, discovered that this number was a little bit of an overestimation. And they actually look at something like 2,600 microlensing effect uh, discovered between 2010 and 2015. Uh, looking at various objects pass passing in front of various stars from our own Earth. And by looking at these microlensing effects, the scientists were able to estimate that it wasn't as many, actually. And so what they discovered is that there might be actually half of uh, the, that number. So we know that there's maybe about 400 to 600 uh, billion stars in our galaxy. And so that means that uh, there's about 200 billion uh, Jupiter-like planemos that are very massive gas giants that we don't really see because they don't have any radiation emitted from them and because they're basically planets. But we think that there might be about double or even triple that of Earth-like planemos out there that are a lot more difficult to detect. So in other words, if you were to actually look at the entire galaxy, the Milky Way, and if you were to count all of the stars, and then were to count all of the planemos, no matter what size they have, uh, there is probably still going to be anywhere from 2 to maybe even 10 times as many various uh, rogue planets and various planemos, which are basically the same thing, um, flying through our galaxy that we uh, think do exist there and 
Maybe one day we'll be able to even uh, study one in a little bit more detail. But as of now, we only know about them through these micro lensing effects. So let's actually go and uh, use Space Engine and try to find out how many of these objects we can discover from our own planet Earth by using Space Engine. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to go to Earth. Oh, and by the way, before I go to Earth, see how there's, this is how many stars there are in our galaxy. And I imagine there's like double or triple of that as Planemos. This is just to kind of give you a visual representation of this mathematical number of these rogue planets. Anyway, so here we go. So here from Earth, what we're going to do is we're going to look for... Um, Planemus in a distance of about maybe 100 light years away from us and go explore some of the more interesting ones. So we're going to go in here, select filter, choose um, Planemo, or that's basically a rogue planet, and we want it to be any object whatsoever. It doesn't have to have any specific parameters. And the distance here will be, well, about 100 light years away from us. So here we go. We're going to press OK. And just like that, we've already discovered over 10,000. So this is how many there are uh, um, basically at this distance. Now let's let's make this a little bit uh, smaller. Let's make it 10 light years um, away from us and we'll do this again. Search for Planemus within 10 light years and there's uh, only six. So basically this is very very close vicinity to our own planet and we know that uh, at this distance there's, there's about this many stars as well. And so it seems that there's just as many Planemos out there as well. Um, now these will actually look all uh, pretty much the same because there, since there's no star around them, they will basically have like no light whatsoever. But this one seems to have just a little bit of luminosity. So maybe we can go and take a look at it because I think it might be actually a brown dwarf, not a Planemo. And this object is actually real. It's uh, it's a cool gas giant, as it's called here. It was discovered by direct imaging back in 2014, and it's known as WISE 08550714b. Uh, now, this is what it looks like. It, it might be a brown dwarf, it might be a planemo. We don't really know because it's dark and it's impossible to see. But all of the other objects we've discovered here will look pretty much the same. There will be very, very black, dark objects that will have, like, no light coming out whatsoever. This one actually seems to have rings, as if I can... Yeah, there's rings here. Uh, so it's a gas giant-like object, Jupiter or Saturn-like object, but completely, completely dark. And very, very cold as well. So if you look at its um, parameters, its temperature is minus 250 degrees Celsius. And even though it has some atmosphere, it's basically a frozen ice world. So there's quite a lot of these out there. And we even had some planets in our own solar system that got kicked out and became Planemus. And there's quite a lot of support to that theory as well. But what I wanted to actually find before I finish this video, I wanted to see if I can find any Planemus that actually have life on them. And let's see if, we, if we're able to find anything within like, I don't know, a thousand light years away. We're only going to look for organic life first, because if there is any life on any rogue planet out there, it's probably going to be inside um, where there is maybe some kind of warmth. And so far nothing, but yeah, so there has to be something like hydrothermal vents or some kind of a heat coming from within uh, the actual rogue planet to create life. So a thousand light years, nothing. Okay, let's maybe uh, change the parameters a little bit. So we're going to look at 10,000 light years away from this location near Earth. And having searched for exotic life, there is also nothing within 10,000 light years away from Earth of that type either. So maybe, just maybe, there is no life possible on these objects. But then look at that. As soon as I selected any biome, which I think wasn't selected before, I was able to find at least uh, seven objects. And this is actually obviously statistically generated. It's not real. It's all procedural. Um, but within about 45 light years, there seems to be at least one Planemo that we're going to go to right now that has what kind of a life? It seems to have, and there's also a moon here, as you can see. Um, it seems to have, hmm, let's see what it has. Ah, I see. It has a planet orbiting around, or I guess in this case it's a moon that 
has um, organic multicellular terrestrial life. Now, the temperature here is actually surprisingly high for an object that doesn't have any stars. Minus, 40, uh, minus 84 degrees Celsius. And that's probably because it's getting a lot of heat from within, uh, from inside. So there might be hydrothermal vents from tidal heating, from uh, orbiting this very, very massive uh, rogue planet. And this is generating heat that's then giving the life um, some kind of energy. So this is very, very interesting and very unusual. Now let's take a look at another one. And I think this here actually has life on its surface. Oh no, it's actually in the atmosphere. It's organic multicellular aerial life. That means that it could be like birds and stuff. Well, that's all hypothetical, of course, because it's procedurally generated, but considering the temperature is minus 250 degrees Celsius, this is really interesting. Now, how this life was created and how this game thinks about creating such a life is obviously a mystery, but for all we know, this might be actually real. So you can see this very dark object has no light whatsoever. The only energy here is probably going to be from inside of the planet, kind of similar to Neptune. Neptune produces a lot of heat on the inside, much more than it receives from the sun. And so this object here um, can probably do just that. And considering it's like uh, 19 masses of Jupiter, it would probably have quite a lot of heat um, produced on the inside. And all of this heat somehow creates life. And there's actually a moon orbiting around it as well. So that's very, very interesting. So we were able to find um, seven objects within 10,000 light years that consisted or that had um, all kinds of life living there. And so what this kind of suggests is that, well, for all we know, there might be life out there very, very different from what we're imagining today and what we will ever be able to discover here on planet Earth. And for all we know, these rogue planets, because there's so many of them, might actually have life hidden somewhere on them. But because they're so much more difficult to study than actual stars, um, we might never be able to discover not only the actual life on them, but obviously not even find them because they're just too dark. They emit almost no radiation whatsoever and it would be very, very difficult to explore. There could actually be one very close to our solar system and we wouldn't even know about it because it's kind of difficult to find them. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And in the next video, tomorrow you're going to learn something else. Anyway, let's actually stop this video here by going to this very unusual globular cluster nearby and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye. And don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning space things through video games, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon to help this channel grow. See you guys later, bye bye.